Hey all and welcome back to Hellfire Comms coverage of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC. Last time in Wave 1 we covered the Golden Dash Cup and the Lucky Cat Cup. For Wave 2 we're checking out the Turnip Cup and the Propeller Cup. Starting with the Turnip Cup and New York Minute. That's right, it's another Mario Kart Tour track. Get used to this, they're probably going to be propping up most of the cups throughout this pass. Well, that does make sense, given it, I don't think Tour was... No, Tour wouldn't have been out when the main game came out. So this is like the other game that's come out since that they can pull from. So it does make sense. But up first, we have New York Minute. And my favourite thing about this that I noticed is this means that both New York and New Donk exist side by side in the Mario universe. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I, I, I don't need an existential crisis moments before hitting the gas, all right? Oh, it could be that, or it could be some time travel shenanigans before Donkey Kong took over New York, which will hurt your brain least. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want me to just stop recording right now? Because we're, we're not passing that level of cringe. There's nothing I can do to counterbalance it. Challenge fucking accepted. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lordy, lordy, lord. Alright, so we got some uh, decent alternate paths here. We got some uh, nice vehicles dotting everything here. The music is suitably swanky. Wario's in first place, which makes sense for New York, honestly. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't piss him off when he's got a shell, though. <laughs> also, I would just like to call attention to the fact that there was a sign that said Donkey Kong, the best musical. What, what metric are they, like, scoring this on? In terms of musicals that have Donkey Kong in them, that's kind of the filter. Good ones do and bad ones don't. You know, we never did get a Donkey Kong Country 4. We got Returns and Tropical Freeze. I would like to think if there was a, a fourth country game, it would be a musical. Just like how Joker 2 is going to be a musical. It took me the longest time to realise that well, that was actually serious. I thought that was a parody article. <laughs> well, I mean... It sounds like a Joker's trick, doesn't it? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we got like all these uh, alternate paths through not Central Park and whatnot. This is pretty cool, I like this. And again, it's doing the thing I like where each of the laps is taking you through a different part of the track. So yeah, it kind of does make it feel fresh each time around. Motherfucker. And also just in general, I fucking love the whole city and I aesthetic. So this is my shit right here. Oh well. Second place is better than third place, I suppose. If I had just taken that corner more tightly, I was too busy looking at the burning DK truck. <laughs> it's fine. You just came first place for losers. Ah, indeed. That's just HSE in a nutshell, really. Well, actually, no, we'd be more like 15th, I guess. We can't even do that right. <laughs> Basically irrelevant. All my stars. This is very flat, lighting-wise. It's very flat in general. Like I, I was saying in the last part about like how I do like seeing the 2D courses adapted in 3D because it kind of makes them feel new. I feel like the Mario circuits are the exception to that because I feel like once you've seen one of these courses, you've seen all of them. Kind of. And the graphical downgrade again really doesn't help that because it literally is just like uh, someone got a few blocks in Blender and threw them together. <laughs> oof. That's a big oof right there. I think it's fair to say this will probably be the bottom when we get to the tier list. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's still fun to race on. It's just not all that appealing to look at. It is just one of the things of, you know, like when they've got now, I've, I wrote down earlier, I checked that there's 96 courses once all the DLC's out. That's how many will be. There's going to be maybe one or two that aren't quite as special as the others. Really? What they should do is like release an expert cup right at the end to take that perfect 100. Yeah, although, you know, they'll really piss people off when it comes up randomly online. <laughs> uh, well, that's the... Uh, the danger of Mario Kart, you know, it's either race or be raced. Although, we'll say that, even with fucking 96 courses available, knowing our luck from last time we did a tournament, we'll just get, like, Toad's Turnpike as every second race anyway. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know why that was happening. <laughs> well, it's, that's just how RNG works, I guess. Music's nice, at least. 
It is, yeah. It's like one of the more iconic Super Mario Kart tracks from that era, isn't it? So. Ah, no. We were talking about how flat the track looks, so you're going out your way to find a ramp on the side. Is that what's going on, Tom? <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, I remember. I remember actually playing this one a lot in um, Mario Kart Wii. I think uh, Hitler beat me to the post in uh, one particularly memorable moment. Oh god, now we're gonna have to cancel Hitler. Ah, uh, worst thing he's ever done. Anywho, I'm back in first place, baby, and Wario is still tailing me. You know how it is, sometimes you just get a rival. That is pretty much what Mario Kart is good at doing, making sure you have one, and that's what makes the GPs in this a little bit harder than something like, say, ASRT, where it's just hit and miss as to who ends up being second place. Really? This is an interesting one because you used to not be able to ride on the train tracks at all, but here you can. So it makes it a little bit of a uh, a dicey decision that you've got to make mid-race. I'm going to try and show it off. This is one that the gimmick on the N64 was that sometimes the train would pull up in front of you and you would have to come to a hard stop. Can't do it that way this lap. <laughs> But yeah, like it would stop you completely. This time, if the train ends up in front of you, you can cut around it going the way on the right. And so you kind of have that choice as to whether you want to make the very tight turn and maybe risk it and get away with it, or whether you do just want to wait until it budges out of the way. But again, it does also do the thing where it points you in a different direction each lap. So you are getting a much more interesting course this time around. Because while that was a neat gimmick on the N64, it's the sort of thing that it was much less endearing from the second time on. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Yep, <That> quick! <laughs> kind of scuppered my lead there. Oh, well. Whoa! Yep, and it is bringing in a little bit of the extra like taking it off the ground I forgot the fancy word I was going to use anti-gravity flame anti-gravity well no because it wasn't the anti-gravity because like it didn't go into that but it was enough to make you do a cool jump mm. okay so it's mandatory to go on the track for this lap it is yeah but this is interesting because in the TAS run from the N64 version one of the tricks they did is that they would clip their way into that part of the track and that is how they would jump ahead. So I think it's kind of neat that now that's the intended route. Huh. Oh, going off. That's one thing that this game loves and has loved since it came out. It does like the big band instrumentation, which I am absolutely here for. Man, my turning is not great in this particular... Uh installment of the Hell Viacom's coverage of yada yada yada. You don't have to do the whole thing every time, it's fine. But no, you won anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, well, we have two cups. One's bound to uh, be run better than the other, I suppose. Yeah, then I saw that Yoshi is catching up with you and Wario, so now you've got two rivals. <sighs> a favourite of mine. A favourite of most people, I believe. Shame about the... Uh graphical downgrade here though. I saw the Digital Foundry when they covered it, they talked a lot about the like cubic lighting, which it's that's not the part that bothers me so much. It's more the fact that they've sort of Sonic Adventure DX the textures toward the end. And so it's like a completely different colour that only really emphasizes the lighting downgrade. Yeah. Like this is specifically the tour version of Waluigi's Pinball. It's not the DS one, as far as I'm aware, anyway. No, it's not. It is based on the tour version, because the 3DS one, it had a completely different, like, just general colour choice, particularly on the second half of the course. It looked a lot more interesting in that version, I feel. Oh, Jesus. Hey, my shitty turning actually helped me, though. Ah! <laughs> you gotta watch out for the pimples, though. <laughs> yeah. The music's still as rad as ever. 
I'm just waiting for the inevitable lap where you get bounced all over the place at the end there, because I know it's going to happen. Well, <laughs> got rid of my red one, but I still got a green one. I mean, when you're just using it as a defensive item, it's not that big of a deal when you're in first, at least. I gotta say, I like the texture of the ground in the, this particular course. It kind of feels like, you know, the stitching in an actual pinball machine. It does a little bit, yeah, it's done a pretty good job of that. It sort of reminds me of the texture work in the toy track from, like, the Wii U back to DLC. Ah, yes, yeah. Like, I remember that one being really cool, and I remember that one being one of my favourites because of the music track more than anything. <laughs> oh, here we go. Called it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you called it. The race has not been called yet. God damn whoever threw that. <laughs> uh. Oh, I mean, at least it doesn't have the lightning cloud from the Wii version, so we can appreciate the mercy this game gives us there. Yeah, they shunted the STD cloud off pretty uh, sharpishly, didn't they? Yeah, and for fucking good reason. <laughs> it, it just wasn't fun. No, it was just annoying more than anything. That's another favourite turn of mine, because you do have to be ready to go a little bit further than pretty much every other turn in the course. Oh, I'm ready to kill when it comes to Mario Kart, don't you worry, mate. As proven by the bomb. <laughs> Come on, Tom. The turns are getting me in this particular cup, but I have no fear. Waluigi is on my side, I'm going to take the safer route this time. It looked like the pimple was for a second there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, my heart caught in my throat for a second there. Yeah, baby. Well, I gotta say, my gripes with some of the uh, visual changes aside, that was pretty fucking solid. It is still Waluigi Pimble at the end of the day, isn't it? That's probably gonna wind up in a similar position to Coconut Mall as a result. Alright, so, that was... Was that again, the Turnip Cup? Yep. Good. My short-term memory is working as expected. See, I remember all of this, and by that I mean I have a notepad document open. <laughs> ah, very good, very good. <laughs> Look at Wario getting pipped to the post right there. It's what he deserves. There you go. New York Minute, second. Because, of course, don't look at burning dick, kids. It's not good. What a fucking clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Two stars, baby. Hell yeah. That's more than one. <laughs> it sure is. All right. Turn it cup. Done and dusted. And now we move on to the next one. The propeller cup. Hi. There we go. All righty. Propeller Cup, Sydney Sprint, Snowland, Mushroom Gorge, and Sky High Sunday, the very first new track in the DLC, which was soon added to tour, but, you know, it was new in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe first, so... It got that head start here, which... I'm kind of glad there are still a few, like, they've kept it matching the general art design of the DLC courses, which makes sense given they were going to plant it back into tour, but, you know, it's fun, so I don't mind. <laughs> All right, mate. Little bit of fucking Aussie fun, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck off, Marine. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, she turned up in a very, very recent, in fact, I think it's still to come out, uh, IDW comic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, she's hanging out with Blazer and whatnot, and uh, Blazer's going to see Knuckles and discuss Guardian stuff. Hopefully she doesn't still use the word bugger in every other sentence, because that has unfortunate implications over here. Yeah, uh, Marine, not Blaze. Although I can see Blaze getting pissed and just becoming Ozzy, you know? <laughs> uh, it's not just like a natural reflex people have. <laughs> uh, I guess so. But I'm liking the, uh, like, just visual design of this track so far. I really like the music from this course. It just feels really triumphant. Like, it's got a sort of sporting vibe to it, which... That kind of... One of my first experiences finding out that the city of Sydney exists was from the tie-in Olympics game on the Dreamcast, so it all comes full circle for me. <laughs> huh. Well, we all have different fonts of information, Flame. You know, I'm not going to uh, blame you for that. Ooh, we're going on a little ferry ride, innit? 
That was a short ferry ride. <laughs> well, we didn't promise the full trip. Jesus Christ, how far are... Well, I was going to say, how far ahead are you? But I can literally see you. But like, how are you staying in front of me, I think, would be a better fucking turn! <laughs> she knows how these turns work. Oh, she has one of the thingies. Watch out. Well, that's the AI for you. They're programmed to use their stuff every so often. So, uh, me, a human player, would know to save that. Well, to be fair, you were sort of tracking her a little bit. So, I guess the human player could have easily made that mistake. This little session here reminds me of Hyrule Circuit. A little bit, yeah. Like, just without the Zelda motifs. Ugh, oh, inked all over. In Sydney, no less. Can I see now, please? Can you make it up in this last lap? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see, Flame. Yeah, they know until it's over. I guess I just don't want to be up there, gravity wise. You gotta dream harder. Ooh. Oh, these turns. These turns and also these items, they're gonna start getting more aggressive now. Ah! I've been fucked over multiple times on this last track. <laughs> I really like that track. That might be one of my favourites. It is great, yeah. Alright, Rosalina. I see what you're putting down. She came from Australia, like originally, before becoming a space goddess. That's why she was so out for blood. Alright, next track. Give it to me, baby. Next up is Snowland. Woo! GBA layouts as well! This is still a pretty fun track, to be fair, and although, like, you know, beating Dead Horse graphics, I do like some of the, like, reflection effects that they've added to this one. It does look quite nice. Okay. I won't judge until I've played it. Like, even the reflections on the road there, even though they are very simply done, they do look really effective. And the thing is, like, yeah, we can sort of compare and contrast the way they are in the base game to this, but at the end of the day, in, in typical gameplay, we're going to be booting it. <laughs> so, you know, like, as long as it looks nice when we drive past. <laughs> uh, translator's note, booting it means, you know, focusing on racing. Booting it means when you're driving and you see the sign with a number on it, ignore that sign. <laughs> One thing that I've seen a couple of people point out in regards to that one section on the first stretch there with the water hazard. In other courses in Mario Kart 8, that looks like it would be an alternate route where you go underwater, but it's not here. Ah. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you're looking for shortcuts, and it is one thing that is an unfortunate sort of handover, like that part there is like an unfortunate thing it inherits from Tour not having that. Alas, well, come Mario Kart 9 we'll be back to that sort of glory. That is one thing I've been thinking about actually, because next generation, when the inevitable Mario Kart 9 comes out, I'm curious how they're going to top this. Because yeah. like, it's a similar sort of thing with Smash, like Smash is like properly driven home, you know, like the everyone is here and they've added so many DLC characters that were probably really difficult to get hold of, like Sora and whatnot. And so like that's gonna be nine impossible to recreate next gen. But also Mario Kart 9, no matter how polished it is, no matter how fun the new gimmicks they bring in are, it's not gonna have 96 tracks. And so I don't know how they're gonna market that next one. Um, it has everything from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but more. Yeah, but everything from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe when that rolls around is going to be fucking huge. <laughs> you know, maybe they could just hedge their bets, expect it to sell as much as a Mario Kart sells, and just roll with it. Maybe. Like, I imagine this is going to be a new thing going forward that Mario Kart will get post-release support. So, like, you know, as they're moving forward into two generations ago, which is pretty good for Nintendo's, right? It will fall back on that a little bit, but 
Nevertheless, mushroom fucking gogs, I love this track. Ah, yes, fond memories of racing here in the Wii version. I could never pull off that shortcut at the end, but it's alright. The snow level was pretty fun, actually. Uh, I guess I should actually, you know, not judge before I play the fucking thing. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> wrong with you? This is probably the most faithful track design, like, as a blow-by-blow -blow recreation from how it was in Wii. The colour is pretty much how I remember it, just a little bit more saturated. And I think the only notable new Whee! thing from the layout is there's one like glider section added in. Oh. But that's kind of okay, because you know, like this level was fucking amazing in Wii and it's fucking amazing here. Oh man, I love the cracked out music. Whoa, Jesus. I am great at jumping between these things. This is a 100% pitch showcase. Oh, indeedy so. But yeah, it's landing on that one blue one that brings out the glider, and that's a neat little shortcut, but, you know, that's about it for the changes. Is that Rosalina ahead of me? I <laughs> think it might be. Hang one of the babies as well. <laughs> if it ain't just Rosalina, it's always one of the fucking babies. Get out of here. Do we think there'll be a pink gold Rosalina in Mario Kart 9? I would hope not. Actually, it's uh, good that you bring this up, Flame, because uh, I've noticed some people say, why not throw in like a character or two with these things? But really, it's mostly just to focus on tracks. You wouldn't really want to confuse the marketing, would you? Well, I mean, the Wii U DLC packs did come with a character each, from what yeah. I remember, but I don't know, like, if they're going to prioritise one thing... I think the tracks are more important. The tracks are more replayable. And, well, yeah, I can appreciate if there's a particular character from the Mario franchise that you would really like to play, then it probably does suck a bit that they're still not here. Ooh. But we do still have a pretty big roster now. So, like, you know, in terms of actual substantial gameplay-related DLC rather than something that's just visual, I'm glad they went this route. Oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> Well, at least we've shown off the glider. <laughs> uh, it's just like we all over again. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, whatever. If it was going to be any of them, it would have been that one. Still in first for now. Just hold on to it. I will. The next track's pretty easy, Touchwood, so... You better hold on to it here. <laughs> Ah, Sky High Sunday, the new track. That's what I've been looking forward to. It is a lot of fun. Like, you can see just from that preview scroll there that you've got some really cool jumps you can do here. And it's on the anti-grav thing all the way through. Nice, nice, nice. All right, got to make up for that disastrous Mushroom Gorge run. Let's go. So yeah, this track, I feel like it's got a cool theme that it's going for the whole ice cream thing. If you spin between those banisters there, it gives you a boost. Oh! So that's something to bear in mind if you need a little bit of extra speed. The one thing I'll say that maybe works against this track is something my friend Lance, Lance with the Pants, pointed out in his video about this, in that if you take a step back and look at it, it sort of looks like the default Fall Guys area. I was literally just about to put that <laughs> It's the exact same fucking colour scheme, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, visually, it looks fantastic. I don't know about actually racing it so far. I don't know. When you're not getting twatted by items, that section at the end there is really sick. There we go. <sighs> Gotta do a little bit more slaloming. Doesn't immediately look like that would be a boost section, to no. be fair. Like, these sections in the other tracks that have them tend to be like that very distinct thing with the spinning animation, and so it's like, okay, this is I'm meant to be doing something with this. Oh, you're going down in the middle. Yeah. Oh, I, f I didn't realise there was another room there. <laughs> I'm just that epic flow, what can I say? Ah... Uh, 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 Wrong time for that. <laughs> oh, the worst time. 
God. Babies, get out! Well, it is one thing that I missed from the other tracks not having the anti-craft sections in just the air physics are kind of satisfying because you have that slower glide down when you're falling which lets you readjust yourself if you need to. Yeah. Alright, if it's going to happen, it might as well happen now. Oh man, if that red shell took a second longer and you lost your iframe. <laughs> really? Careful. I'm being as careful as I need to. Famous last words. I saw someone rank this as like their least favourite track in the DLC. I've honestly kind of had a fair bit of fun with this one. Oh, I disagree entirely. I think this is one of the better ones. Well, just like in terms of aesthetics and like design, you know, I love me a food based course, even being a fatty, fatty, fatty fat. It's still visually appealing. And the course design is pretty cool. And now we see me, Tom 64 in all his winning glory. He may have lost that one race, but we don't pay attention to that. Leave it alone. If we don't look at the numbers, it didn't happen. There he goes. Oh. Why did they include me being overtaken there? Ah, so we could... Yeah, there you go. It was the comeback arc. That's what it was. God, it's even worse when it's like at the middle, and <laughs> not like the start end, whatever. It's more insulting in the fact that it's not just the rank, but the name of the track glows white as well. <laughs> Ooh, a new vehicle customization option. I assume this will be like a glider or something. Possibly, but we can have a look. Indeedy, sir. Don't go anywhere, because we still have the grading to do on these tracks, which will be a little bit more complicated than the Wave 1. Uh, what we got? Oh, a new car! That looks stupid. I love it. I feel violated. If you hit the back of the head, it has a tongue that comes out, right? <laughs> oh, Flame. Why you do this? Please stop. Anywho, guys, that was our coverage of Wave 2 of the Booster Course Pass DLC, the Turnip Cup and the Propeller Cup. At the time of us recording this, the Rock Cup and the Moon Cup have not been given a release date yet, but uh, we'll try and get around to these roughly around when they uh, drop, so uh, no more waiting, no more longing for Mario Kart 8 covered by two annoying nerds. It will be on time. I'm rambling now, so give us a bow and we'll head on over to Tear Maker. Alright folks, we're back. This is what we ranked all the courses in Wave 1 of the DLC. Now we're going to do Wave 2. And I feel like this is going to be a little bit more complicated. Because it was pretty obvious where these fell. But uh, there may be some upsets here. So uh, why don't we kick things off with New York Minute. How do you feel about the course, Flame? See, this one is a... Uh... It's one of my highlights from the second pack. I'll say that maybe it's not quite as cool to me as the Paris track was. But I would say it's still an A, just maybe a slightly lower A than Paris. Okay. I like it more than Paris Promenade. And I think just because of all the, you know, the signage and just the way the track works, like the course layout and whatnot, I like it a bit more than... Shroom Ridge, because Shroom Ridge is a very tightly designed course, but it's also very linear. This has some uh, alternate takes as you can go through the city, and I just like the whole look of it. It just clicks with me, as it were. It's not as, you know, in-depth as Ninja Hideaway, so it's not going to break S anytime soon, but it is a high A for me. And then we have Mario Circuit 3. Yeah, so this one, I'm hesitant to say D, because I feel like... D would just be a bad track and this one it's not bad it's still like fun enough to run through but it's also completely fucking unremarkable so see yeah it's probably one of the tracks that got the worst treatment when it came to the cheapifying of tracks from previous games um yeah i'm gonna give it a c as well if only for the fact that i have you know, nostalgia from Super Mario Kart, and also my memories of playing this track in Mario Kart Wii. 
Next up, we have Calamari Desert. Uh, for me, I like the changes they've made for this. I don't know, it's otherwise kind of unremarkable. I like this one quite a bit. I feel like the fact that they've changed it and removed the main nuisance from the original one, I appreciate. I would say probably a high B, personally. You know what, I'm going to put it over Choco Mountain, because like I said, I do like the course changes. And hell, you heard me, I was surprised when a new bit of like geometry turned up there. So I think putting it any lower than B would be a little bit disingenuous. So yeah, Calamari Desert, you are perfectly cool. So you go in the middle of B. And next up we have Waluigi Pinball. I like the track, it is still Waluigi Pinball. I feel like the updated, downgraded presentation hurts it compared to the Mario Kart 7 version. Mm -hmm. So I would also say B for that. I'm going to say A, if just for the fact that it's still as fun to race as ever, but it's not going to crack the ones that have come before it. So I'm going to put it just there, I think. Yeah, that's fair, yeah. Like a low-ish, or like middle-lower A tier. That was the, uh, the Turnip Cup. Now we have the Propeller Cup, and we're starting off very strong here with Sydney Sprint. I already want to put this into S. Just from course design, to aesthetics, to music, it clicked every single thing I want from a Mario Kart track to me. To me, it's sort of bouncing on the border of high A, low S, but I'll give it the S. There you go. Well, that's basically my tier list to begin with, so <laughs> let's just put it that way. Um, one of the biggest surprises for me, Snowland from uh, Super Circuit. For me, like, I do like it. Not S tier, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this one. I like that it's an update version of a GBA track that holds up really well. I feel like the section I mentioned during the race where like it could have been a water section that wasn't cripples it a little bit, but I would say probably a low B. Uh, I'm going to put it over Calamari Desert. I was pleasantly surprised. That is a good ice slash snow level. Let down only by the fact that there is no underwater section, like Flame said. Otherwise, it looks nice, it plays nice, it sounds nice. But it's a super circuit track that surprised me, so just by, you know, not being disingenuous, it has to go, like, middling to high B. Alright, Mushroom Gorge, I sucked ass in this one, but that's not the course's fault. Wanna say, it's Mushroom Gorge, so, S. I like this a lot. Really? It's a simple course, but I really like it. It, it. Like I said, it's one of the most faithful recreations, but like it was fantastic and way. I think it's been in one of the other games since. I think that was in 7. Like It's been fun every time it's played it. It's one that, because it's got like a simple design to it, I don't feel like the graphical downgrade holds it back. So, yeah, like to me, that's one of my favourites. Huh. I have to kind of balance this with how good I am at a track versus objectivity so I, I feel just in terms of this i feel it is a high a i'm gonna put it just there ahead of shroom ridge it's kind of like the mushroom brothers as it were but uh very fond memories of this one from the wii game and i feel like they replicated it fairly perfectly although it doesn't really do anything else to stand out so that's why it can't reach the heights of like coconut ball or you know tracks like that but a uh, very very quality and we're gonna end things here with sky high sunday kind of in a similar situation to ours with the sydney level here in that it's great it's Probably on the border. I feel like I would lean maybe towards a high A purely because I think Sydney's like the theme connects with me a little bit more than the fancy ice cream world thing. Whole gravity race and stuff's really cool. The jumps are really cool. I do still like it a lot, so high A for me. Yeah, I'm gonna put it just above Mushroom Gorge actually. Visually, course design wise, it's great. You know, it's a brand new track, and, you know, just going by a few data mines and whatnot, it seems like we're going to be getting a few more original ones, so I hope they continue to build on this stuff, and we get some really good Mario Kart in. But uh, that brings us to the end of Wave 2, guys, so, as you can see, mostly A so far, 
you know, the uh, the Asherag is kind of lonely up there with just two. But uh, it's early days. We still have another, let me do some rudimentary maths here, six more cups worth of content, which is a hell of a lot. I can't wait for more of this. I've enjoyed it a lot so far. It's been great to get back to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Absolutely, yeah. It's one of those games that... You know, like I said, it's been around for coming on close to a decade now, but it's always fun to go back to, and I feel that supporting it with more DLC rather than trying to make a success right now has absolutely been the right decision, so I can't wait to see what's next. Indeed. Graphics aside, I feel like Nintendo is onto a winner here, and you can agree or disagree about, you know, Nintendo trying to one-up the consumer i don't feel that in this instance it may be a little bit cheap in a few areas but uh you know <laughs> the amount of content you get speaks for itself most of these have been pretty good just look at how many we've put in a so far but that's our opinion way free like we said doesn't have a release date yet nor does uh, wave 4 so uh, why don't you go ahead and leave some opinions in the comment section here and uh, let's keep it civil no graphical like flame wars please leave that to other places on the internet we like to keep it civil here at hfc so flame you big old cuckold are you looking forward to more mario Kart? I wish you had a hot wife so I could fight that one back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I say, I'm really looking forward to whatever they bring up. Like, it's one of my favourite games, so the more content I can get for it, the more excited I'm going to be. So, yep, yeah, it's great stuff so far. All right, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time when Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC drops. Bye for now.